You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Why are you driving so slowly, Miller? Sorry, sir. The traffic is unusually heavy today. I can see that. But can't you speed it up a bit? I wish I could, Mr. Gordon. Ever since we crossed the bridge, it's been bumper to bumper. Well, then, try an alternate route. This is the alternate route, sir. But it doesn't look very promising. Oh, I'm going to be late. She doesn't like it when I'm late. No, sir. I better call home. A capital idea. It's busy again. Yes, sir. There's something wrong with this phone. The batteries are going haywire. Would you like to try mine, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Pa pass it back to me. I'll dial if you like. What number? You know the number. My apartment, of course. I'll give it here. Very good, sir. Who is she talking to? Perhaps she's calling your office. Well, this phone isn't working either. What did you do, sir? Throw it out the window. Cheap plastic contraption. But it was an excellent phone, sir. You bought it for me last week. Then I'll buy you another one. Now get me home. Yes, sir. May I suggest... The ice bucket is full. There's a bottle of your favorite scotch. Not at this hour. It'd only slow me down. Have enough trouble keeping up with her as it is. Quite. Oh, Flora, please don't be cross with me tonight. I'll be home, dearest, I swear to you, just as soon as I can. Of course you will, sir. Such a lovely girl. I'm very fortunate, you know. Most certainly. A man of my years. If I may say so, Mrs. Gordon is very lucky, too. I'm sure she appreciates how lucky. Yes, yes, I'm sure she must, but sometimes I wonder what it's like for her alone all day at her age. Poor thing. Hello, concierge. Yeah, this is Mrs. Gordon. Um, could you send up some chili cheese fries and a Coke? I'm starving. Just put it on the tab. Don't worry, Harmon will pay you. See, we were going out to dinner, but now I don't know if he's ever going to get here. Picture of an unlikely lady-in-waiting and her knight in not-so-shining, shining armor. An aging man who leads his life, as Thoreau said, in quiet desperation. Because Harmon Gordon is a slave of love, and has been, most unfortunately for him, ever since his heart was captured by a woman some forty years his junior. And because of this, he runs when he should walk. He surrenders when simple pride dictates he should take a stand. He pines away for the lost morning of his life when he should be enjoying the evening. In short, Mr. Harmon Gordon may not know it yet, but what he seeks most desperately is a fountain of youth. And who's to say he won't find it? Because this just happens to be in the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone and our story, A Short Drink from a Certain Fountain. Starring Adam West with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Flora? Flora Dare. Over here, Romeo. Oh, there you are, darling. What happened to you? Please accept my apologies. The traffic was backed up all the way from the office. How come I'm not surprised? You'd be late for your own funeral. And what did you do today? Go shopping again? 
Oh, I had a ball, an absolute swinging time. I only asked him passing, my dear, because I'm concerned. Oh, let's see. I had breakfast, and then I had lunch, and then I fired that stupid maid, and then I waited for you. Whether you realize it or not, big boy, that routine gets old fast. Very old. I'm truly sorry. Well, all in all, Harmon, it was one of those days that makes you want to jump off a bridge. Earth to Harmon, do you read me? There's still time if you care to go out. Yeah, and do what? Dinner at the tavern. <laughs> Whoop-de-doo. I thought you liked the food there. How about the rainbow room? Well, I suppose, if you prefer, it is awfully noisy there. At least we could hear some music. You want music? But I've bought you all the latest recordings. I want live music, any kind. I don't care, as long as I can dance. Dance? Matter of fact, I feel like dancing right now. You do? Will you dance with me, Harmon? Well, I, I, I suppose. Come on, baby. Let's see what you've got. Let me take off my hat and coat. Oh, come on. Loosen up. Let it move you. Feel that beat? I'm, I'm trying, dear. Move it, Harmon. I'm doing my best. What's wrong with you? I can't keep up. Shake your booty. Now move your arms like this. Flora, please be more careful. It was just a piece of glass. It was a very old piece of glass. Worth what, 89 cents? Hardly. This... this was a wedge wood. Big deal. I'll buy you six more just like it. I'll even have the concierge gift wrap them for our anniversary. Then we can sit around and play old records. Sounds like a hot night to me. What's that tune you like? Come to the church in the wildwood? Oh, a real toe-tapper. You keep forgetting that I'm no longer a varsity ant. Were you ever? Furthermore, if my doctor had witnessed that little burst of activity just now... Oh, that's always your excuse. It's not an excuse. My heart... If you keep telling me about your heart and all your aches and pains, Harmon, I'm gonna run out and get sick. Would you mind putting that cigarette out, dear? I've asked you not to smoke. Why not? Bad for your heart? You might start a serious fire. Honey, baby, one of these fine late evenings, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Torch this whole mausoleum. There are things here that mean a great deal to me. Like what? That eyesore I knocked over? It was... it was my mother's. Oh, spare me. It was worth very little except for... the sentimental value. That's a word you may not understand, Flora. Sentiment. It means the capacity to love. Listen, big boy. If I don't fill the bill anymore, just say it loud and clear. In case you forgot, there are 14 flights a day to Reno, and I'd love to be on any one of them. But if I am, you're going to pay. Big time. Flora, darling, I am not angry. I, I simply wish that, well, that you'd be a little more... Careful and considerate. Somebody should have wished that five years ago when you and I signed the papers. I knew you were old, Harmon, but I didn't know how old. You better watch yourself, honey. If you ever take me to a swinging weekend in Egypt, I might just run away with a mummy. Know what I mean? I'll just, uh, just wash up a bit and we can go out to dinner. Oh, you do that. We'll make it your night, baby. We'll go someplace wild, like the Elk Slotch. Flora, Flora, darling, what's happened to us? That's it. Flora. I told you, I don't want to talk about it anymore. But Flora, dear, I told you I was tired before we left. Flora, dear, I told you I was tired. You're always tired. It's not something I can control. These pills I take. I didn't ask you to run the mile. I just asked you to go dancing or to the movies or someplace, any place but here. We went dancing on Monday evening. We've been to the movies twice this week. I only thought... Thought what? That you could take my mind off what a miserable bore you are? Well, let me tell you something, honey. I only thought that, well, just one evening, only one, we could quietly watch television or read or... 
have a conversation. It's a fine art, you know. The two of us with no one else around. Something to bring us closer together. And you think that's all it takes? This is so like you. The Late Late Show, after we have a game of chess. That's not what I mean. Sounds really great for senior citizens at the old folks' home. But for your information, sweetie pie, I don't have my reservation there yet. They won't let me in. I still have my own teeth. Flora, try to be reasonable. And don't tell me how you picked me out of a chorus line and introduced me to the finer things in life. Your idea of the finer things is to hold hands in church and listen to the organ music. Flora, you know that isn't true. Take my advice. Get yourself a nice glass of warm milk and curl up with an almanac. Whatever it takes to get you through the night. Because this time, it ain't me, babe. <laughs> Forgive me. I know it's late. But is Dr. Gordon still in the lab? He is? May, may, may I speak to him, please? This is his brother calling. Yes, I'll wait. Now then, Leonard. Yes? Which monkey would you say is dominant in this group? I guess the largest. Look again. The largest monkey is seated in the corner of the cage doing absolutely nothing. Doesn't seem very dominant now, does he? You're right. Now, notice the small one in the center of the group. The young one? He has the food and water to himself. No one's challenging his position. But doesn't that go against the normal rules? Of social organization? Not where the young are concerned. And the cause of this new hierarchy, Leonard, is the Gordon vaccine. He's been injected for three weeks running now. His appearance has changed, and the others can see it. They may not understand, but they respect it. They have to. They share a responsibility for his well-being. I see. Dr. Gordon. The implications... I mean, if this process could be extended to other species, other social structures, the results would be... Just a moment. Yes, Julie. I thought I told you no more calls. I'm sorry, sir, but it's your brother. He asked me to ring through. Harmon? Well, what do you know? Put him on. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Gordon. Raymond? Harmon, is that you? I hope I'm not interrupting. Are you all right? You sound a bit under the weather. Oh, fine, fine. Look, Raymond, I was just wondering if, if you could come over this evening. Tonight? Well, I don't know. I was just training a new assistant. How about lunch tomorrow? I'm afraid that won't do. I, I know it's late, but I'd like to see you. Why so mysterious? If it's something to do with your health... No, no, no. Everything's all right. Everything's fine. It's just that, well, I, I'd like to talk to you. I see. Raymond, please, please come over. I'm at my wit's end. I must talk to you. Very well, then. Thank you, Raymond. You don't know how much this means to me. Relax, old boy. I'll be there as soon as I lock up. What is it, Doctor? Nothing serious, I hope. No, no, nothing serious. But if I'm not mistaken, there may be a slight problem of social organization in my own family. Drink all right? Perfect. Good. Uh, that's good. You look tired, Harmon. Do I? Yes, Harmon, tired and depressed. Now, do you want to tell me about it, or shall we sit here and play 20 questions for the rest of the evening? <sighs> Been pretty rushed the last week or so. Flora asleep? Yes, yes, she went to bed about an hour ago. She asked, she asked to be remembered. Oh, she'll be remembered. I'm not sure I like the sound of that. Merely an observation. You know, you really ought to, ought to get to know her better, Raymond. She's really a, a fine girl. Did I say otherwise, Harmon? No, but I know you two haven't been exactly close as a brother and sister-in-law should be. Harmon, would you do me a favor? Anything. Two favors, actually. First of all, 
Don't sell me on, Flora. Don't even try. You know what I think of her. And this isn't backbiting now. This is what I've told her to her face, so I have no compunctions about saying it aloud. Saying what? Let me finish. I could forgive her her appetites, Harmon. I could forgive the fact that she's made out of asbestos and doesn't have a heart in her body. You're being unfair. But I cannot forgive her for what she's done to you. She's turned you into a frightened, quaking, damned fool who dotes on her, gives into her whims, and runs after her like a poodle. That's item one. Raymond, please. My second favor is simply that from now on, after you've had your battles, you not call me at odd hours of the night. I don't do this often. Once is often. Twice is endless. Harmon, we're very close as brothers go, don't you think so? Yes, despite the difference in our ages. Maybe that's why. You've always been my big brother. And you know there isn't anything in this world that I wouldn't do for you if it's in my power. But you can't expect me to run over here like a St. Bernard every time you get frozen halfway up the mountain. You make me ashamed. Don't be. She's a predatory little alley cat, and she's always been that way. I knew it the first time I saw her, but... I can give you only so much solace, so much sympathy, and then it begins to stick in my craw. Now, what is it you want tonight? Just, just someone to while away the hours with you? Or is there something more specific? Uh, the things you've been working on at the Institute. Go on. The cellular injections, you've been successful with them, haven't you? Oh no, you're out of your mind. Desperate I am. Out of my mind, I'm assuredly not. But you must be, if you're thinking... You've made animals younger. I've read your paper, you've injected them with your fluid, and they've become young again. Isn't that true? Animals, indeed. Guinea pigs, white mice, hamsters. You've been able to rejuvenate glands, organs, sometimes the entire cellular structure. But we haven't even scratched the surface yet, Harmon. We're stumbling along in the dark. I want you to inject me. And I repeat, you must be out of your mind. We don't have a remote idea of what's involved here. The research is very impressive. All right, we've managed to rejuvenate a handful of small animals and rodents, but we're 20 years away from trying this on human beings. Why? Are you serious? We're dealing in the basic building blocks of life, Harmon. We don't have the remotest idea of how much damage might result in the long term. We don't know what we're doing to the basic metabolism of the body or the mind. God only knows what effect this has on the brain. Harmon, we're winging this, and we've killed as many as we've saved. You said you'd do anything for me. Anything within reason. This is within reason. I'm close to the end of my rope, Raymond. I've reached a point where it really matters very little to me if I live or die. Surely not. I want you to test this serum on me. Short of that, I can't bear getting any older. Aside from this, this pronounced death wish of yours, how would you like to spend the rest of your life as a mutated freak? Or a blithering idiot? Or a mindless shell? This is not only possible, Harmon, it's highly probable. We couldn't control an experiment with a human being. It'd be catch-as-catch-can. I not only would take the risk, I'd welcome it. The answer is no. You don't know what you're saying? Nor do you. Then it's the same as a death sentence. Exactly right. I wouldn't try experimenting on a strange bum picked up off the street, let alone my own brother. Please. The answer is a firm, irrevocable no. In that case, I bid you good night, Raymond, and I thank you for coming. I trust you can let yourself out. Where are you going? Out onto the balcony. I'd like to be alone. Harmon. I said I'd like to be alone. To collect my thoughts. Bear this in mind. As a physician, I can attest to the effects on the human body of landing on a concrete sidewalk after a 500-foot fall. It isn't pretty. And as a man, can you attest to the effects on the human heart when a man is deeply, dedicatedly, totally in love with a woman who can't stand the sight of him, the sound of him, the look of him? Have you any idea what kind of life this is for me? I know what kind of life it could be, and should be. You're a bright, 
charming, wealthy, discerning guy, and you've been warped and hammered out of shape by a flashy little piece of baggage who isn't fit to wait on your table. Whatever she is, and whatever she isn't, she's the only thing on God's earth that I care about. Do you know what it's like to believe your life is over and then suddenly, one day, to walk into a room and feel it begin all over again to see the sun in the sky, even though it's the dead of winter, to lie awake at night flushed with anticipation for a brand new day because she will be there. Don't do this to yourself. Listen to me. This is important. It matters. Ever since I was a young man, I wished for someone who'd let me show her the world, discover it with me. Because without anyone to share it with, the world might as well be buried under six feet of snow. Someone who'd be there, Ray, that's all. I wouldn't ask much in return, a kind word once in a while. She still has a love of life, believe me. Only I can no longer share it with her because I'm old now and getting older. The days run away and leave me further and further behind. And now it's too late. I beg of you, Ray, if you've ever cared for me, your brother, give me this one last chance. Give me a chance to save myself. And if I don't? Then you can conduct one final experiment. We'll find out who can reach the sidewalk first, a man in an elevator or a free-falling body. Oh, my dear God. You're serious. Good night, Raymond. I'm getting tired now. Let me think about this. Give me an hour or two. Will you be up? Are you coming back? I have to think first. Tell me you'll wait to hear from me. Give me your word. All right. But don't be long. Soon now, I'll need to rest. Would you like me to sit down? Yes. Roll up your sleeve. Easily done. I want to thank you for coming back. Don't thank me yet. I have to swab your arm. You'll feel a slight sting. Is that what you tell your patients? Sometimes. <laughs> That's what the school nurse used to say when we were boys, remember? This won't hurt, just a little sting. I remember. Then she'd give us each a lollipop. No candy this time. I'm all out. Do it now, Raymond. God help me, but you don't leave me much choice. There. That's it? That's it. All of it? It doesn't take much. A few cc's. And I may expect what? You may expect a miracle, but it's unlikely you'll get it. I want you to go to bed. Don't go to work tomorrow. Tell Flora you're taking the day off. I'll be back first thing in the morning. I'm keeping a very close check on you for the next few days. And when might I expect some... some change? Usually within six hours. That's when the first physical changes occur. As to mental changes, none of the rats or guinea pigs have articulated to us the exact feeling. <laughs> I'll be the first. You'll be the first. Making the assumption, of course, that you'll be alive. Oh, I'll be alive, all right. Do you want to know something? I shall not only survive, I'm going to become young again. I feel it. I sense it. I wonder if she has any idea what she's wrought, even the thinnest suspicion. Don't blame her. It was my decision. I make a promise to you, brother, that if you don't survive, or if you're damaged in any way, I'm going to take it out of her skin, piece by piece. She's going to donate a pint of blood for every one she's bled out of you. This is no medical hypothesis, it's an oath. Relax, will you? I'm fine. Go to bed now, Harmon. I'll see you in the morning. that you, Harbin? Yes, Flora. Go back to sleep. What are you doing in front of the mirror? Just looking at myself, dear. Well, don't do that. You'll have a nightmare. Time to call it a day, lover boy. Or are you gonna stay up all night? I like the sound of that. Up all night. 
You know, I just might... Don't take all the covers when you get in bed. I'm trying to sleep. Of course you are, Flora. Pleasant dreams. Come in. Morning, Flora. Why, if it isn't the quack himself, what do you want? Where's Harmon? He was last seen pounding a pillow. Some fun, if you ask me. Is he all right? What is this, ESP or something? I asked you a question. How is he? <sighs> He's okay. Boring, but okay. I want to see him. <sighs> then walk right in that room over there and blow a bugle. Maybe that'll get him going. He needs his sleep. I'll wait for him to get up. You do that. Take off your stethoscope and make yourself at home. You haven't talked to him this morning? I haven't talked to anyone. Not until you started pounding on the door. Do you know what time it is? What about last night? Did you talk to him last night? What difference does it make? He never has more than two words to say. But he sounded lucid to you? Look, Pally, I'm not the night nurse. I think you're in the wrong ward. Besides that, you bore me almost as much as Harmon. Now listen to me, you little... Get your hands off of me, Frankenstein. Harmon, how do you feel? Ugh. I'm not sure. Harmon, how do you feel? Poor little... Harmon? Is that you? Harmon, take your hands away from your face. Let's open the curtains and throw some light on the subject. <gasps> your face? What's wrong with it? Look at your... your reflection in the window glass. Hmm. Oh, well, what do you know? Incredible what a good night's sleep will do for a man, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. Harmon... Harmon, what's happened to you? To the bags under your eyes, the lines... Are you wearing makeup or something? Makeup? No makeup, my dear. Just a few hours of sound, refreshing sleep. You look... You look different. Do I? You look wonderful. You look so... so young. What have you done to yourself? Ask my brother over there. Don't ask his brother. His brother doesn't know. <clears throat> How do you feel, Harmon? How do I feel? Like ten million dollars, tax-free, that's how I feel. You know what I'm going to do for you, Ray? I'm going to let you take me on a tour. They can write you up in all the medical journals. That won't be necessary. But first, you'll have to give me four weeks. Flora and I are going to take a little ocean trip. Would you like that, my dear? Oh, an ocean trip? Oh, you bunny rabbit, you. Oh, Harmon... Darling, when do we go? I've given it some thought. I think we ought to check out whatever sails tonight. Unless you'd rather fly. Honey, baby, I am flying. Boat, plane, who cares? Oh, I don't know what's happened to you, but I'll clue you, Big Daddy. I don't even care. Whatever it is, I like it. I like it very much. Mm -hmm. I don't think you'd better plan on any trips, at least for a while yet. Oh, blow it out your black bag. I'm going to get fixed up for you, honey. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Where do you want to go, Australia, Fiji, the Hawaiian Islands? Where? You name it, honey, and I'm there. I'm serious, Harmon. You can't go running off. Not now. Just look at it. My reflection in the glass. Please, sit down. No, wait. What? I, I, I don't believe it. I'm still changing. My hair is black again, jet black. And what's this? A, a little mustache, and it's black, too. I want Flora to see it. Not just yet. But this is astounding. I haven't worn a mustache since... Since you were 30 years old, which is precisely the age you look now, at least at this moment. <laughs> this is fantastic. This is absolutely fantastic. I'm getting younger, what, every 20 minutes? When I woke up this morning, I looked 45. Now I look 30. If I keep going at this rate, I may get drafted again. <laughs> that is... Uh, what's the matter? Don't you get it? That's just it. I do. 
If you keep going at this rate, I think we're in deep trouble. Raymond, this is beyond conception. You can't imagine what it's like. I feel, I feel light all over. I can breathe again. No fatigue, no heavy, dull tiredness. I feel as if, as if I've been lugging a case of concrete on my back and somebody just cut it away. Let me see your face. I don't know whether you realize this or not, but you've just altered not only my face, but the face of mankind. You've written a whole new chapter in medical history. I said, show me your face. Uh, where's my mustache? Well, what's going on? I wish I knew. But more than that, I wish I knew when it would stop. Or if it will. Why don't I make us some coffee now and we could... Harmon. Harmon, you've changed again. I know. I'm, I'm even younger. What's going on? What is going on here? Raymond, it's starting again. I feel it. I feel it happening inside. I still feel it. You'd better get back to bed. Yes, yes, I think I will. I think I'll go back to bed now. Harmon, I want you to tell me what's going on. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Let me go, please. What's happening to you? Your robe, it's too big. Why, Harmon? Take your hands away from your face. You've got to tell me what... No, Flora. Oh, no! Let him alone, Flora. Let him have some privacy. Ah! Well, are you going to tell me now? Sit down, Flora. What is it? What's happened? I've been working on a research project. What kind of project? A cellular serum. Up until last night, I had only tested it on animals. Harmon insisted I try it on him. What does it do? As far as I can tell, it stops the body's aging process. Beyond that, it will, in some cases, rejuvenate cells and tissues. In layman's terms, it might make a person younger. Younger? Let me have one of those cigarettes, will you? How much younger? We were never able to ascertain how much, once the serum took effect, or how long the process would take. But now, I believe we know. I don't understand. I suppose there are variables to consider, but in the case of Harmon, the process took approximately ten hours. You mean, it's over? That's right. The changes have finally stopped. I want to see him. You shall, but you're not to wake him. He's in shock, and this sleep is precisely what he needs. I want to see him right now. Do you? Suddenly so solicitous. Very touching. Don't you try to stop me. Flora, as of right now, as of this very moment, you'll have some adjustments to make. What are you talking about? I want to see Harmon. From this point onward, you'll have to readjust your entire life. Oh, this is some kind of trick. I want to see my husband. Look at me and listen. Uh, let me go. Harmon is sleeping, but when he wakes up, he's going to need your help. Help? What kind of help? Let me see him. I'll let you see him, but I think you'd best get oriented first. I don't need anything from you. Are you beginning to understand? What is that in there? The ground rules have changed. The world no longer begins and ends with Flora. It isn't just Flora's wishes, Flora's temperament, Flora's capacity for anger, Flora's needs. Now it's something else. Something very different. Take a good, long look. I don't want to! That's very nice, but you have no choice. You've got a responsibility, and you're going to honor it. You're going to take care of Harmon now. He's going to need you rather desperately. Now look at what's sleeping in your bed. Yeah, there, little fellow. Go back to sleep. The world is in such a bad place. You'll see. Oh, Flora! If you're leaving, my dear, make note of the fact that the clothes you have on are all that you take with you. You're out of your mind. 
If you think I'm going to spend the rest of my life taking care of that grubby, thumb-sucking little baby in there... That's precisely what you're going to do. Short of that, Flora, my dear, you leave the premises as you came, unadorned. The furs, the jewelry, and everything else my brother gave you, that remains here. You can't make me stay here, and neither can he. There's other fish in this ocean, mister. Indeed there are, but you're not married to them. You happen to be married to my brother. That's crazy. Not crazy, Flora. Bizarre, perhaps, but very much a fact. And if I find out that he's left alone with maids, governesses, nurses, you're going to find yourself back on the chorus line. What? Do you understand, Flora? He's to get attention now, the attention he deserves. I don't mean intermittent, sporadic moments between nightclubs and beauty parlors. I mean morning till night. Won't he... won't he grow? Yes. As of right now, he will grow. A little bit older each day, just as any little boy. It isn't fair! Isn't it? The two poles of life where respect is most needed. But it's the second one that's often short-changed. You'll experience the process together. He'll be growing older, and so will you. Until you're both truly old. A little poetic justice, don't you think? That now you should finally have to drink from the same cup. That you should have to watch his youth encroach on your age. And the most anguished part of it, and the most illogical, is that youth always defeats age and then despises it for losing. Never realizing, my dear, never giving it a thought, that when tomorrow comes, there's always someone younger just outside the door, waiting to come in, forever waiting to come in. <laughs> But everything's... everything's on his side now. You see, my dear, as one gets older, see how wise they get. Shh. Harmon Gordon is sleeping. He's taking a little nap. He'll wake up soon and impatiently demand a lollipop or a stuffed toy or some other form of attention. Youth is like that. It demands. If you don't believe it, ask Flora. Ask her any day of the ensuing weeks of her life as she takes notes during the coming years and realizes that the worm has turned. The oppressed has become the persecutor and youth has taken over. It's simply the way the calendar crumbles in the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop, TwilightZoneRadio.com. Visit TwilightZoneRadio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD, or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. A short drink from a certain fountain, starring Adam West, with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Rod Serling from an idea by Lou Holtz. Heard in the cast were Meg Falcon, Christian Stolte, Doug James, and Lynn Foley. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Paul Patch, Terry Jennings, the American Forces Radio and Television Service, our sponsors, and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible.
This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>